If you're new here, my name is Kristen and I post DIY, lifestyle, and shop with me videos every week. If you like all of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss a future video. Today, I'm going to share with you how I got over the worst of the flu in only one day. You know, like there's a recovery phase to the flu, but the worst of the symptoms, like the body aches and just the overall horrible feeling, I only had for one day. This is the third year in a row that I have gotten the flu. I travel a lot for work and so I'm always in and out of airports and I'm exposed to a lot of weird germs and it seems like around New Year's, I always end up getting it. Even years that I've had the flu shot, I still got the flu. Two years ago, I had the A strain in January and the B strain in May. I don't understand how that happened but I'm here with some of my remedies on how to get over it as quickly as possible. Quick disclaimer, I am not a medical doctor. Please, 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 and my number one tip is to reach out to your doctor if you think that you have the flu. And definitely reach out to your doctor if you wanna try any of these supplements or anything because they can interact with medications. Some of them might cause problems if you're pregnant. I don't know, I'm just sharing what I did. Please pick and choose what you think will work for you and always talk to your doctor. Also, one last thing before we get started, I know that you can find pros and cons for everything on the internet. So I might talk about vitamin C and you can go on the internet and find articles against vitamin C and you can find articles that are pro vitamin C. So I understand that it's just the age that we live in. So please no hate comments or anything below because you can find articles on both sides of the story. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm gonna split this video up into two parts. I'm gonna show you what I bought at CVS and talk about each of the items a little bit. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how I use them. Definitely don't go out and buy all of this stuff and take it all at once because that is not good. You have to space this stuff out or you're gonna get like a really bad stomach ache. So I will tell you exactly how I used it, timing and everything, just keep watching. Step number one. The second that you get body aches, call your doctor or go to urgent care right away to get oseltamivir phosphate. I'm probably butchering that word. What this does is it is a pill and you take it twice a day for five days. And it is supposed to shorten the length of your flu by 24 to 36 hours. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have the flu and it lasts an entire week, you will beg for any kind of relief that you can get as quickly as possible. The caveat is that if you've had the flu for like three days, you can't go get this, it won't work. You have to do it the second that you get symptoms, go into your doctor, get tested, and they will prescribe you Tamiflu. So this is step one. So since it was so late at night, I actually couldn't pick this up from the pharmacy until the next day. So that night I went onto Facebook and I asked the community what their best flu remedies, tips, and tricks were. And I got tons and tons of comments. Thank you to everybody who posted. And I went to CVS the next day to pick up the Tamiflu and I purchased everything that I could find from that Facebook post. So here is what I bought from CVS. And guys, please, you do not have to go crazy and buy all of these things. These are just some ideas. Do your research, find out what you think will work for you. You don't have to get all of it. These are just some ideas. So after we picked up the Tamiflu, I got good old vitamin C. I know it seems like such a no brainer, but honestly, people forget the power of vitamin C. Some studies show that vitamin C can reduce the length of a cold by 24 to 36 hours. The recommended dosage can be anywhere between 200 milligrams and like 6,000 milligrams. So I went somewhere in the middle and I stayed between like two to 4,000 milligrams a day. When you get up into the higher numbers, like around 6,000 milligrams a day, it can cause upset stomach and diarrhea. So just really, really be careful with that. I wouldn't tread that high up. Two to 3,000 didn't give me any problems at all. So I actually picked up this emergency from the store and I also actually had these in my cupboard. I actually forgot about them. Um, but this one also has like some antioxidants, vitamin Bs, electrolytes, and I think you can get it with like zinc and stuff in it as well. So either or is good. Okay, so next on the list 
is elderberry. Elderberry has been this hot home medication that everybody's been raving about. And this is the first year I've actually saw it out on the shelves. My mom used to get it from a lady who used to make it in her house. But now I found, I think this is Zardy's. Uh, sells like a whole line of different kinds of elderberry syrups. Elderberry appears to boost the production of some immune cells and may also help block a virus's ability to spread. One study showed that taking four tablespoons of a specific kind of elderberry syrup was able to shorten the flu by 56%. By the way, guys, I'll put all the links to these articles that I found all this information in the description below. So definitely go down there and read up on it if you're a little skeptical. Like I said, internet pros and cons to every side. So definitely do your own research. So I found this, I was super excited. The only caution that I have to these elderberry syrups is to check the back label. In one serving, there's 10 carbs nine sugars and then nine grams of added sugars. And this is so sweet. I don't think that there was any reason they should have added additional sugars onto it, but they're recommending that you take this every four to six hours up to like four times a day. So that's a lot of sugar. So just be careful. I would probably next time buy a brand that doesn't have as much sugar in it. One other thing to note, if you're buying multiple supplements, make sure that you notice if some of these mixed compounds have other things in it. So this one also has vitamin C and zinc. So you don't want to be taking a whole bunch of vitamin C tablets and forget that this has a bunch of vitamin C in it as well. So just something to be cautious about. Also, if you don't want to buy all of these supplements, you can look for things that are mixed into other compounds. You're not going to be getting as much of the supplement, but that's just something to keep in mind if you're on a budget. So next on the list is echinacea. Echinacea is an herb and people on Facebook were swearing by it. They were saying that echinacea is their go-to. Some people only take echinacea. The articles online are mixed reviews about exactly, you know, the benefits of echinacea and if it really, really helps. But I thought, with so many positive reviews on Facebook, I would definitely pick it up. It doesn't really hurt to have it. It was actually pretty cheap. I got the 400 milligram tablets. And one thing that I thought was really interesting is on the back here, it says, take one capsule seven times daily, preferably with meals. Seven times is a lot of times during the day to take a pill, but I have probably took it about four times and I'll let you know how and when I took it. Seven times a day is a little aggressive, but if you're looking for something that's super all natural, herbal remedy, lots and lots of people were swearing by echinacea. And this is one of the things that was actually new to me. I've never taken echinacea before. I've definitely taken elderberry before and vitamin C and actually all of these other things before. And echinacea was the only brand new one that I've added and I've had the shortest flu symptoms to date. So maybe it is the miracle supplement, who knows? All right, so while I was at CVS, they were having a sale on like buy one of anything nature's bounty, get any other nature bounty thing for free. So I picked up zinc. Zinc is also, you know, like all of the other ones, a little bit controversial, but a lot of pharmacy medications actually add zinc. Like a lot of the emergencies have zinc in it. They've actually added some zinc in Zarbies. So a lot of places really claim that zinc does a lot for your body. So I picked up this one. This is a 50 milligrams. And I'm going to read you a little excerpt from this actual scientific journal that I found online that says a meta-analysis published in June 2011 concluded that zinc lozenges reduce the duration of cold symptoms by 12% to 48% but only at doses greater than 75 milligrams. And I'll include the link to that article below. Um, I purchased the 50 milligrams of zinc. I still only took one of these per day because a lot of the other things I was taking had zinc in it. So I am sure that I was getting more than 75 milligrams a day of zinc. Zinc is definitely one of those things that you wanna to talk to your doctor about before taking long term. But I think if you're taking it in like a small, short time frame, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So next on the list, I started taking my vitamin D3 supplements again. I actually had these, I didn't go out and buy them. I noticed when I was going through all of my supplements that these say bone and immune health. So I went online and I did some research and according to an article published by Harvard Health, most people understand that vitamin D is critical for bone and muscle health, but our analysis has also found it also helps fight acute respiratory infections AKA the flu. I will leave that article below. Harvard Health says vitamin D is good for you and it says it's for your immune health, so I took one of these a day. Okay, so next I picked up Zarbi's cough and immune support lozenges. 
So the one thing I really liked about this is there's no processed sugars, artificial colors, or flavors, and it has vitamin C, zinc, and echinacea all in this. So you can see the trend of zinc, echinacea, elderberry, all of these things being put into like one dose compounds, which is like really, really nice. You just have to make sure again on the back what concentrate these are in so that you're not taking way too much if you're also taking the same supplements on their own. Finally, last on the list, is good old Dayquil and NyQuil. So my problem with Dayquil is that Dayquil only suppresses your symptoms. Dayquil does not address the real issue. It doesn't help your body fight off the disease or anything like that. All it does is suppress the symptoms so that you feel better. The worst part about that is because you feel better, you feel like you can get up off the couch and do all of these things. So you might go run some errands because you feel great, but really you're just out in the world infecting people or going to work and getting everyone else sick. So definitely don't take DayQuil and go out and do things even if you feel okay because this isn't helping you. One thing that I highly recommend, and this is probably the biggest number one thing that I can recommend to everyone is rest. If you have no money, if you have nothing else, if you do nothing else after this video, just rest. I know that we are living in a busy world and we all have a ton of obligations to our family, friends, kids, community, etc. But the best thing that you can do for everyone is to stay inside and stay on the couch and get better as fast as possible. We're not helping anybody by pushing through our cold and trying to be a trooper and feeling cruddy for eight to 10 days when we could have gotten over it in one to two days by resting. So the second that I had symptoms, I made sure I rested that day, the next day, and the next day after that. Even though I was feeling better, I knew that I could take a turn for the worst. I was doing all the right things for my body, especially resting and letting it recover. And the number one thing that I think helped was taking those three days to rest, even if I felt better. Oh, I also wanted to mention that I cut out all processed foods from my diet that day, but I really, really think that that helped. Cutting out sugar, cutting out processed carbs and any unhealthy kinds of foods. I ate a whole bunch of kale and hard boiled eggs basically all day because that's all I really had in my fridge. And bone broth, I actually had some bone broth in my fridge so I did start my day off with some bone broth. Highly recommend all the time. So I know that all of this stuff might seem a little excessive and you might be worried about mixing all of these natural remedies and herbs and stuff and you definitely should be. Definitely talk to your doctor before you start taking a whole bunch of these pills. But if you are a normal, healthy adult, minus the flu that you have right now, the Office of Dietary Supplements at the National Institute for Health say that the risks of potentially toxic effects from herbs are almost always related to long-term use and that natural cold and flu remedies seem fairly safe, at least when taken in normal doses by healthy adults. The fact that you probably only use them for a few days when you're sick adds to the safety. So small doses, short amount of time should be good. So we got through all of the supplements. Now let's talk about how and when I took them. Definitely don't go out and just start taking all of this stuff at once because it will not agree with you. You will get an upset stomach and I don't recommend it. Now, I didn't really do a ton of research on like the optimal times that you should be taking all of these things. This is just kind of the method that I came up with and it didn't hurt my stomach or anything, so it worked for me. Please adjust as you think you need to. So at 10 a.m., I actually got my Tamiflu. So I took the Tamiflu with breakfast around 10 o'clock in the morning. After I ate breakfast, I took 10 milliliters of the elderberry syrup and I laid down on the couch. Around 11 to 11.30, I took echinacea, zinc, and a vitamin C tablet all at once. None of these really bothered my stomach or had any interactions. I took these between 11 and 11.30. About 12.30, I took my first DayQuil. Like I said, I wanted to wait as long as I could to take my DayQuil so that this would kick in and make me feel better most of the day. At 2 p.m., I had an emergency and a vitamin D supplement. At 4 p.m., I took another echinacea and a, another dose of the elderberry syrup. At 7 p.m., I took a vitamin C tablet. At 8, I took my NyQuil. And around 8.30 to 9, I took my second Tamiflu. And throughout the day, I was kind of eating these lozenges as 
I needed. So I will leave the times and everything that I took in the description below. So definitely head down there and check it out. I have a lot of information in the description. Again, I want to stress how important rest is in this entire process and eating well. Best things that you can do for yourself. If you can't go out and buy all of these supplements, rest, water, eat well, and rest some more. So the next morning, my body aches were gone. I could not believe it. This is the only time this has ever happened out of all the times that I've had the flu. That to me is a huge success. And even though I felt really good that next day, I knew that it could all turn around on me. So I just made sure to continue to rest that day. And I did the same exact regimen the next day. And I did most of it on the third day, but definitely make sure that you finish up your Tamiflu and you know, just take whatever, whatever you think's working for you. And that's it guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, that you got something out of it. Uh, some new ideas and I really hope that if you are feeling cruddy that you get well very very soon. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss a future video. Also let me know in the comments below what you do whenever you get the cold or the flu, what has worked for you, what hasn't, and let me know in the comments if you do try any of these out and if they work for you. Until next time. Uh -huh.